Hi, I'm Wayne Jones. Welcome to Writing and Editing. This is episode 160. A few more words. Sensitivity readings. Um, before I started talking about readings, though, I wanted to talk about ratings. Uh, and I just wanted to make a plea here for uh, if you like the show, and even if you don't like the show, if you could really uh, uh, go and and uh, give a rating or a review for me on, on Apple. Apple has become kind of the de facto place where uh, people give reviews. Uh, there's all sorts of ways you can get there. If you go to my website at writingediting.ca, uh, if you go to Apple Podcasts, you know, the uh, the app or the or the site, if you just Google, how do I rate a podcast on Apple? And I will also put links in the show notes uh, to, to get you there as well. Uh, you could either give a review, which would be a kind of written bit uh, of text or just a rating, you know, one to from one. I think it was from one to five. Uh, I'd really, really appreciate it. I'm trying to uh, build those up. Uh, really trying to uh, sort of broaden the uh, the availability, frankly, of the podcast. As you know, or as you, you may know already, all of the episodes are not only available through podcast readers and on that website I just mentioned, but they're all available on YouTube as well uh, uh, in 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 uh, video form. So uh, please, if you if you have some time. Uh, please drop over and uh, and give me a rating uh, or a review. So thank you very much, and uh, just uh, on with the show then. Uh, so the title, as I mentioned, is A Few More Words, Sensitivity Readings. Now, now this has nothing to do with, uh, with science, that kind of sensitivity about, you know, making microscopes that are, you know, that could, can see something a little more close closely. And this is not some new psychological indicator of, you know, someone's uh, in someone's head about how sensitive they are or anything like that. But basically, it's a, it's a term that you probably may have heard in the last uh, couple of years, uh, especially lately. Um, and basically, what it has to do with is uh, publishers uh, have. It, it sort of has to do with two things. One is um, people wanting to work into the editing process for a book or the writing process for a book, if you want to put it that way, a sensitivity reading. That is, before you uh, publish it or before you send it off to an agent or to a publisher, you get someone to read it for, to give it a sensitivity reading. Uh, and the other way that uh, it's applied is, is is at the publisher. And there's been some of these in the news recently about uh, sensitivity readings where, frankly, what a publisher has done is gone back and looked at uh, older texts that they've published and they, that, that they hold the copyright for and actually removed texts that they consider would be uh, insensitive to some segments of uh, the readerships uh, these these days, so and we're not talking about uh, you know what when was it back in the eighties uh, when they started labeling CDs? If anyone can remember what those look like, uh, and we're not talking about hardcore stuff like rap lyrics uh, and what they what some of the rappers thought about the police and that and that or and women and that kind of thing. We're talking about uh, you know levels of sensitivity that are. Uh, you know, several light years down from that. Uh, and basically things that are phrased in words that are not the politically correct or the woke words that we, uh, we are um, asked to use these days. And in the news recently, basically the, uh, the, the, the holder of the copyright for the James Bond books has recently or is about to republish them. Uh, to take out uh, insensitive phrases and words and situations. Agatha Christie's novels have been redone uh, in that way. And the children's author, Roald Dahl, his books as well have been, done, have been, uh, have been sensitivity read and revised as a result of it. So um, I find it, I mean, in a way, it's, it's, it's kind of incredible. It, is, it seems 
unreal. It seems like a parody of itself. Uh, I have, I have a, my background, uh, part of my background, part of my educational background is in the study of English literature. And ba- way back when, when I was studying it, we would use terms like expurgated, uh, you know, referring to a text that had had, uh, you know, offensive things removed from it. And there was also a very specific, there's also, and it's still used in English, there's also a very specific in, in, a word in English called Bowdlerize, B-O-W-D-L-E-R-I-Z-E. And it has a very specific source and a very specific situation. And I'll just quote, because Wiki on Wikipedia, they sum it up quite nicely where this word comes from. It's named after an English phys- physician named Thomas Bowdler, who lived uh, in the 18th and early 19th centuries. And in 1818, he published a censored version of Shakespeare called The Family Shakespeare, (laughs) expurgating, quote, those words and expressions which cannot with propriety be read aloud in a family. (laughs) I'm sorry I can't keep my composure. I'm not meaning to be snide or or catty or or, uh, anything, because I think this is a very uh, serious issue. Uh, uh, effectively, it's a form of censorship. I mean, if you're preventing uh, free speech from happening, if you're preventing, if you're changing free speech that has already happened and converting it into something else, that is censorship. You know, we, we, we often think of censorship as being broader and a little more aggressive than that. But if you're taking insensitive words out of Roald Dahl, uh, that's still censorship. Um, and the sad thing for me about it is that, uh, you know, we're not children. Uh, we know that the world, the world has not always been pristine and, uh, in the products that it put out, puts out in the art that it puts out, it's still not pristine. It will never be pristine because we're human beings and pretty far distant from, uh, pristine. Uh, and the other thing that has always bothered me about these kinds of initiatives uh, is that really what you have here is a teachable moment. I mean, um, you know, a few years ago, for example, I don't, uh, I sort of lose track of time with COVID in the middle there. Maybe 10 years ago, uh, there was a version of uh, Huckleberry Finn that was published with, and I have to say it this way now, the N word removed. Whereas that word was was uh, very commonly used at that time, and was not considered offensive. So, uh, I guess all I'm saying is that there's there's two ways to do these things. One is that yeah, you can go ahead and take out the words and uh, and edit it in that way, or you could say that uh, for the person who might be sensitive to that word, uh, the teacher, the parent. Uh, perhaps the the person that's reading it the, themselves might realize that things in a rel- in a relative way would say, yeah, that's how they used to do it, uh, and that's interesting. That's historically interesting. Of course, we wouldn't do it now, and and you learn something from it rather than sort of making it as if you know this never happened. Uh, uh, you know, it's very much. I'm sure I'm not the first one to compare it to. Big Brother in George Orwell's uh, great novel, 1984, where they would revise the history books to, uh, if something inconvenient, if there was something inconvenient that they didn't want as part of the official history, uh, they would revise the books so that it, you know, this thing never happened in the first place because we don't see it in our history books. And the other part of it, the other aspect of it that I, I wanted to mention is that uh, doesn't really have to do with the, the politics, frankly, of it and the censorship of it, but the artistic integrity of it. I mean, basically, you're you're taking uh, the the writer, say, of the James Bond books, and you're taking a work that he produced and uh, messing with it. You know, they're, they're with the integrity of it, and uh, you know who. I was, you know, I was about to say, who has the right to change that? Well, it turns out that the copyright holder has a right, and that's, I suppose, the publisher or the heirs to the to to that or whatever. But for me, it's like you know, if you were to see a, an abstract painting 
in a in a in a gallery in a museum and to change the colors because to make them match better uh you know artists is very important uh scholars work hard for example with written text and i remember this very well from my studies to present the version of the text that the author intended there's a whole subset at least in i, I remember it from english literature of scholars who work on that the text you know establishing that the the what they call the copy text this is the version and you in the scholarly editions often on which the popular editions are based uh, a lot of scholarly effort has gone into that you in into the shakespeare that you read for example there are hundreds of books and probably thousands and millions of person hours that have been put out in into establishing that text it's not as if uh you know the shakespeare first folio was published in the early 17th century and it was perfect and that's the one they used there's all sorts of questions about it but the way it was put together had a huge amount of work has gone into that and then go just go back to the artist uh the artist wanted it a certain way those were the words that they used at the time and frankly i believe that those are the words that should stay there and as i say if they're offensive now if someone uh if they cause uh, a ripple in someone's sensitivity now that can be explained you know uh, as they say we're no, we're not kids we should be able to to deal with uh sometimes harsh things or sometimes things that are not so harsh but are just not uh just not the um the vision that we have in our culture now for uh, for uh, for what it is so um Anyway, if you get a chance to sort of read there's I've also put some links in the show notes to some of the news stories that were reporting on the stuff that I've uh, that I've just been talking about and I'd be interested if any any listeners or any viewers on YouTube have any comments about this topic about sensitivity readings. And that's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. Check out the show's website at writingediting.ca and also please contact me anytime if there's a topic no matter how specific or how broad that you'd like me to cover on the show and let me know what you like and don't like. I'll be back on Monday with a regular full episode. Please join me.